It's been a, a pretty interesting day and a half for you, I imagine. Uh, what's, uh, what's the last 36 hours or so been like for you? You know what? It hasn't been that different for me. Like, I, uh, one, it feels right that I'm fighting on this stage. It feels right that I've got my contract. And as far as the comment goes and stuff, like, it, doesn't, it didn't really phase me like that. But it's just people need to know, like, yo, there's cameras on you. So whatever you say, you're representing the sport. So there's people watching, and I had to make sure I punish him for that. And you can't get away with speaking like that, you know? And I know he wanted a reaction out of me in the fucking... Sorry, excuse my language. I was told not to swear too much. Um, uh, was that after <laughs> your other interview? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in, on the ESPN one. No, but it's... Um, yeah, you can't get away with speaking like that, you know? And he wanted me... Like, he wanted a reaction out of me to, like, uh, the sort of fight gets somewhat cancelled because... Right before he, he uh, offered to shake my hand, I told him, no, uh, you're looking for a way out. You missed weight and you're celebrating like you made weight. Did you, you see that? When he made 139 pounds, he was celebrating like he made weight. I'm like, what? He's just looking for a way out. And I told him that. And then he just he's mentioned the terrorist. And I just looked at him like, what the fuck? And obviously my instinct is to slap him or whatever, but... I was like, no, tomorrow I get to deal with him, you know? I'm not gonna give him an easy way out. Because if I give him one slap now, Everyone breaks it up and, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do wonder, right, because I mean, obviously you're here for a reason, right, and that's to get a UFC deal. And this, this added layer gets added to it, right? Was it difficult to, like, maybe not let yourself go down that road and, and to keep focus on, like, the actual task at hand? You know, I've got, like, good people around me now. Um, my brother, my teammate Amir, Jake Shields, these are very experienced guys and, they keep me grounded and they always keep it real with me, you know, even my manager, Tim and Audi. So when they spoke to me, like, uh, don't worry about these things and this and that, and they were like, these are just reminders. Me, I've got tunnel vision. A fight to me is a fight. You could swear at my mother, you can do whatever you want. A fight is a fight. I'm still feeling very, very disrespected. Just the fact you signed a contract to punch my face. So you can't really say anything more to disrespect me, you know what I mean? It's just, what he said was just, not, it's not a good look. It's just, you don't get away with stuff like that. But in terms of like, did I feel disrespected? Yeah, but I feel disrespected anyways. This guy signed to beat me up in front of my, my family and take food off my plate. It's pretty disrespectful if you ask me, you know? Nice. Uh, clearly you were dominating the fight, uh, but I mean, you, you know, didn't get the finish until the very end. Was there any frustration at all? Or how did you feel that, that things were going in there? No, I don't know if you lot saw it, but like first round was like a 10-8. I tried to let him have it, and I did let him have it, and he was like kind of being a bit of a cockroach, like trying to just defend and whatnot. And round two, I was just like, you know what? I've pretty much got this fight in the bag. Like I know this guy, the damage I put on him is crazy. I'm in crazy shape. And uh, I was like, I'm just gonna make him suffer a bit more. I was talking to him in there, and I was like, man, it's crazy like how you don't, you're not speaking now. I didn't hear a word from him. I didn't hear one word, not even like, shut up, be quiet, or anything like that. And I was just like, it's crazy. This is another thing I want to address. Like, I don't know if you lot heard it. Um, but this guy, I'm okay. Like, I'm okay to forgive and forget, and it's cool. But how unapologetic he was about the whole thing, just, I was just like, this guy's a real douchebag. Like, you can say sorry and cool, maybe I can be the bigger man, and maybe I can look at you like, differently and, and, ho and hopefully just forgive you for that which is cool like we all make mistakes but so unapologetic for it and making excuses and that that can't run and then and then you showed this he showed his true character he was quiet when I was beating him up you know at least if he took that same game I would have had a bit more respect for him but clearly he's a coward I don't know if you stayed off social media this since this all this happened or anything, but I mean, it seemed like there was a huge swell of support for you, and you know we don't normally see that on Contender Series, right? It's yeah. a bunch of guys that nobody's ever seen fight before; they're not sure. So, have you felt that fan support? Because it seemed like you had a, a, a lot of people cheering for you tonight. I did, I did actually, I did feel feel that support. I, I tried to stay off social media, like uh, I, just in general, I tried to stay off it. But for this fight, it was my phone was just pinging off like on everything, and there was a lot of support. Uh, going for me. I think Instagram removed my post as well. It was kind of, it was blowing up. But at the end of the day, like, it just shows, like, man, there are good people in this sport and, and they realize, like, man, a guy like this doesn't deserve to be here, you know? And they were all supporting me, hoping that I, I do well. And, and, like, my friends were, like, calling me and stuff and they're like, you better beat this guy now. There's a lot of hype. And I was like, you idiots, I better beat him anyways. 
Like I'm fucking, I'm, I'm here, I'm fighting, you know. Like this guy's gonna take my head off. It's kill or be killed in here. So any extra comment doesn't really matter. But it was just interesting how they think of it. Like this is real, man. This is blood sport, you know. Yeah. The last thing for me, I mean, obviously mission accomplished. You're in the UFC. So what's the plan now? I mean, uh, is there a date on the calendar you're looking at? Are there opponents you want to fight right out of the gate, or do you want some time off? What, what's the plan from here? Nah, uh, nah. Listen, I, I've been very inactive. Way more inactive than than I would have liked to be. Um, I want to be active as possible. In December, I want to go. November, if they can put me in. January, wherever. You know, I just want to start climbing up the ranks. I feel like I'm at a decent level. I can take these fights. Um, the end goal is obviously a world title. Now I'm with uh, American Jiu-Jitsu, Jake Shields, and we're going to climb that ladder real quick, you know. But let's see. I want to take my time. I don't want to rush nothing. But I want to get fighting, you know, get these under my belt. And if I'm moving up quickly, then, then so be it. I know what my level's at, you know. I know what the work I put in. David, congrats on the big win. You, uh, you look phenomenal. There's nothing I can't say that social media isn't already, you know, quoting and retweeting. How does it feel to have somebody like Jake Shields in your corner? How, what's that extra edge like with a former UFC title challenger and a former Strike Force champion? Man, honestly, like I was a big fan before this, uh, before Jake Shields, and my my boy Tyra Kazim hooked us up together, and and we've been working since, and. The guy's done it all. He's had the biggest fights, the biggest pay-per-view fights. He's uh, had the world titles. He was undefeated for like fucking 10 years or nine years or whatever it was. And he's done it all, like little things that he's telling me, uh, like in terms of for, like mindset and how to warm up and uh, what what to think and what, what little adjustments that he put in my game. Like I didn't get that much time to work with him this this fight, you know. But it was enough to to make the necessary adjustments. Like I can't wait. Uh, what's down the road, you know, with him. It's just great work. It's great to have him in my corner. And how do you, if you could touch on that real quick, how did you, uh, how did this link up happen and how do you celebrate the uh, the fact that you could not be a fan anymore, but be a, a pupil, a student with a, a so, legend? So yeah, like I mentioned, like uh, I wanted I wanted to move from London because uh, I I felt like the, I, that was the most I could, could get out of those, those guys and like uh, I didn't feel like they were elevating my career as much and I, I wanted to take the next level. Um, and me and my brother were training hard, but uh, yeah, at home and doing more individual specific training, like going wrestling. Big shout out to my wrestling coach, actually, um, Andrew Tauchi. He was helping me a lot. And uh, we were kind of doing specific individual work, going places to, um, places to spa until I had a visa because I couldn't get a visa to get in this country. I was supposed to fight on September 7th, which was my birthday. So I was supposed to get my contract on my birthday, but it didn't happen. But anyways. And then I called Tarek Azim, and Tarek Azim's been trying to make this uh, this uh, link up happen between me and Jake. And it finally did happen once I got my visa, we started talking and this and that, and we clicked straight away. Um, yeah, and now it's, it just feels normal having Jake in my corner, you know, it just feels normal, we're cool. It's, you can't be a fanboy anymore, like, because cause we got some serious work to do, you know? <laughs> Excellent, well, great job on breaking past that ceiling, and good luck going forward. I appreciate you, man, thank you. Thank sure. you.